Hi everybody, my name is Toya Robinson. I'm an international public speaker regarding epilepsy and comorbidities, especially mental health difficulties. And I'm also founder of Epilepsy Sparks, which is an international organization where we get um, contributors from the um, uh, medical and scientific population. So we have um, neuroscientists, neurologists, epileptologists, epilepsy nurses, um, and in addition, um, the equally important um, uh, patients so and they can be patients from all different sorts all different ages ethnicities um, sexes everything and from all different countries um, and it's a really really exciting piece of work um, that I have such a passion for um, the reason that I do what I do is that I have epilepsy myself um, it's uh, currently um, retractable epilepsy which means that it can't be completely controlled I have been on epilepsy drugs since I was 10, which is now, you're going to work out my age, but that was like 28 years. Um, I also had brain surgery, a temporal lobectomy it's called, five years ago, because my seizures were getting so bad, so bad that my life expectancy was short, and I was very lucky to be suitable for surgery, and I believe my words were, yep, scoop it out if you can. Um, so I'm really glad that I did that. Um, Anyway, so this video today is based upon um, the mental health of um, young people and their epilepsy. So yes, so I was diagnosed with epilepsy when I was 10 years old, although I do recall having my first seizure when I was six. Um, and if you work that out, obviously it means that I've had seizures for a number of years without anybody noticing. Um, now, I suffered from mental health issues from primary school. Indeed, I recall the first suicidal ideation thoughts that I had, I was eight. Um, and, you know, it's, I'm not the only one, <laughs> this, this goes on quite a lot. And the thing is that, especially when you're a child, who do you tell? If you feel that you're not able to tell your parents or you feel that you're, there's nobody close enough to express your feelings, especially negative feelings too, then the problem is that you feel worse. <laughs> because these feelings as a child and as an adult, but you know, when you're a child you need even more support, that they're just going round and round and round in your head. And the beliefs that you generate about yourself are just horrific. And so this is what happened to me. And I so I was diagnosed with when I was 10 and I did see a, um, a sort of therapist for a whole hour when I was 10 and that was it, gone. Um, I was just presumed that I was fine and I really wasn't fine. Um, yeah, things got worse and worse. Uh, you know, maybe it's coincidence, maybe it's not, but the thing is, if you have something like epilepsy, you're taking all these drugs. I've basically been doped up since I was 10, that's what it feels like. Um, and working at school is so much harder because these drugs, they slow your brain down pretty much, simplifying it, because you don't wanna have, they're trying to stop seizures, right? So it makes studying a lot harder. It makes forming relationships harder, you know, not just because of the drugs themselves, but whether it be down to embarrassment, some kids will get bullied. Um, and if you don't have the support at home that you need as well, then things are a million times worse. And I just had to get on with it. I just felt so, so alone. And, you know, so this suicidal ideation continued I was quite clearly, upon reflection, suffering from extreme depression, um, functioning just about, but I was very depressed. I became anxious, you know, what if I have a seizure? Um, and then I would just try and put it to the back of my mind and pretend that everything was fine. And it really wasn't fine. I had a wonderful paediatric neurologist, but I was never referred to um, anybody in the uh, psychiatric profession. And I really, really wish I had been. I really should have been. Because by the time I supposedly grew up to be a supposed adult, psychologically, I was so unwell. Um, and this was so unnecessary. I ended up having to see multiple doctors. Um, in fact, so as I mentioned before, like I had uh, my temporal lobectomy five years ago and 
after that, as a result of not having help when I was younger, at least partial result of that, I became so unwell, I actually got admitted to hospital. And, you know, it's frightening for anybody. It's frightening for the individual, it's frightening for anybody that loves them or cares about them. And again, just going back to when I was younger, you know, I wish that somebody had been able to say to me, you're not a failure. You're not an evolutionary mistake. That's how I felt. I felt like I should never have been born. And you know what I did actually find out when I was um, older, just prior to surgery in fact, that a person close to me, at least biologically, they said, oh, I didn't actually believe you had epilepsy before, but now they, they'd only just witnessed a tonic-clonic seizure. It's, oh, okay, I get it. And I just thought, I get it. I get now why I was treated the way that I was by this individual. It makes sense that you know that they thought I was just faking everything. I was told that I was lazy as a child. Um, I was made to feel like a complete failure. Thing is, you're going to be really tired because you're drugs. You're going to be upset if you have seizures, especially uncontrolled seizures. You're going to be upset that you're different. Being a kid is hard enough anyway. We, you know, kids can be vile sometimes, but also, you know, we've got these hormones going through us, especially in puberty, makes things a million times harder. So um, it's really, it's great the work that organisations such as Epilepsy Action are doing now to raise awareness of the importance of mental health in young people. So they need to have, be able to have somebody to go to to speak to. If they're just feeling rubbish, you know, and, and I say just, what might appear rubbish to one person is not to another. And we have to try and make young people think there's another option rather than self-harming, rather than suicide, because these threats are real. It's essential for those with epilepsy, children with epilepsy, to have someone to speak to um, in a professional sense, so as someone in the psychiatric field, someone who's able to uh, understand that Yes, you may or may not be having seizures. You might have controlled seizures, but you're also on drugs. There's something different about you. Um, and they need to know that these are, here are some coping mechanisms. Um, here are some ways or, or people to talk to if, you, you know, if it's urgent. Like when I was young, I didn't even know about um, epilepsy action. I didn't know about the Epilepsy Society. I didn't know about young epilepsy. Um, I didn't know about the Samaritans or Childline. And I wish that I had, it would have made such a difference to the quality of life as a young person. Um, indeed, you know, I wouldn't have had the scars that I have. I wouldn't have had, you know, so much wouldn't have uh, happened. And we can really better the lives of um, the young people in today's society, but just acknowledging that they might be feeling rubbish and you know what, we might not understand why they feel the way that they do, but somebody will and we can get them the help that they need. So today that it's Purple Day, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to talk about, of course epilepsy, because that's what it um, is for, but also the comorbidities, particularly mental health. Um, you know, I feel that we can talk about these things in a positive and constructive way. We can learn from errors that have been made in the past just by educating um, ourselves and others regarding epilepsy and the effects of it are you know they are so empowering for so many people and i think few people realize that there are at least 600,000 people in the uk alone with epilepsy potentially over 70 million in the world and of course there's a higher rate of suicide i say of course so it's easy easy for me to say it because it's so depressing um, anxiety inducing and many other things um, so let's help protect young children through education, through making them realise you're not weird. There are certain things that, you know, as humans that are not in our control. Um, we need to reduce their levels of anxiety, which, you know, in effect could actually help control their seizures as well. Um, and just, as I said before, just give them somebody to talk to. Um, on an end note, really just support and love your children or those that you care for because at the end of the day, 
If a child feels respected and loved, their life is so much better, whether they have epilepsy, whether they have mental health issues, whether they have other illnesses or diseases, they know that they're loved, life is better. Um, so anyway, if you would like to speak to me, find me online, um, as I said, I'm a public speaker, so I'm on toryrobinson.com, I have epilepsysparks.com. Uh, if you need a helpline, Epilepsy Action, I call them the Epilepsy Samaritans because <laughs> they really are like Samaritans to me sometimes when I just need to speak to somebody who gets it. Um, there's also, as I previously mentioned, the Young Epilepsy, the Sudep Action, um, and then there's another organisation, a new, relatively new one called the Cheeky Neurons. They're actually based in Australia, but of course you can access all their stuff online and it's about finding you know, ways to explain epilepsy to children. And again, I wish that I'd had that when I was little. So um, please also check out Epilepsy Sparks, as I mentioned in the beginning. Um, it's uh, just, I, I love it. I love it. We have people, again, from all over the world contributing and making epilepsy interesting. And sometimes, at least to me, even quite exciting, given the research that's being done, etc. And I would, again, love for children to see the interesting, like, whoa, that's so weird, part of epilepsy, rather than having to, or feeling like the only natural way to go down is through a mental illness. So yeah, anyway, um, thank you everybody for celebrating Purple Day with us. Um, to us every day is a purple day, but <laughs> this is our one public purple day of the year and yeah, thank you.